first get an overview of what the Amazon S3 and CloudFront services do. Amazon S3 is a storage service offered by AWS that includes a web server with which you can host a website or also a React application. S3 only offers a HTTP server, so HTTPS is not supported. That's why we will be using CloudFront that can be hooked up with S3 that offers HTTPS and can also be used as a CDN, a so-called content distribution network. CloudFront is a web service that speeds up the distribution of your site by delivering the content through a network of worldwide data centers called edge locations. This means that your site is cached on servers in all of those locations. When a user visits your site, the site will load from the nearest edge location, which means that the content can be retrieved much faster due to the reduced number of network hubs and latency. So now that we know how the Amazon S3 and CloudFront services help us to run our web application, let's start setting it all up. Let's log into the AWS Web Console. Once logged in, let's enter S3 into the search field and click on the S3 service. Here we will click on the Create Bucket button. First, we will create the bucket name. The bucket name has to be unique across all AWS customers. Therefore, it's recommended to add some random string to the end of the name. The AWS region will be the region you want your website to run in. I'm hosting my website in the US. As we are using CloudFront, which will distribute the website globally, the location isn't that important. We can keep all other options as default and click on the Create Bucket button. As you can see, the bucket has been created. If we click on it, we see that there are currently no objects in the bucket. In S3 terminology, objects refer to the files and folders. If you would want to use only HTTP, you could allow public access to your S3 bucket, but we will keep the permissions and options as default for now. Let's head over to our React application and open the terminal. You can open the terminal by clicking on it under the View menu in VS Code. When you open the package.json file, you can see the different scripts that can be run through npm. Let's type npm run build on the console to build our application. This will create a folder called build in the root directory of our application. Once the build completed, you will see that the build folder contains the production optimized bundle of the application. We now need to upload this bundle to the S3 bucket. For this, let's go back to the S3 service in the AWS Web Console and click on the Upload button. As you can see, the interface is not that user-friendly and we can't just select files and folders, but need to upload the files and the folders by clicking on the corresponding button. It is, however, possible to just select all the files and folders through the Finder window on Mac or the Explorer on Windows and then drag and drop them over without having to select them separately. Once done, click on the Upload button to upload the files. We will see in a later step how we can automate this process by creating a custom NPM script. Now that all the files are uploaded, click on the Close button. You now see that all the files are in our S3 bucket, and with this, we have completed the first step. Next, we will create the CloudFront CDN. Go to the search field, enter CloudFront, and click on the CloudFront service. 
You now see all the CloudFront services. Let's create a new distribution. Under Origin Domain, search for the S3 bucket name that you have created. This name is also set up as a domain name which points to the S3 HTTP server that runs on your bucket. Under Origin Nexus, we will choose Origin Nexus Control Settings. You will now need to create a new control setting. You can keep the defaults here. If you set the signing behavior to sign requests, it means that the private content can only be accessed through the special CloudFront signs URLs or signs cookies. I'll not go further into this in this tutorial. Click on create to create the control setting. Once created, you'll see under bucket policy that it says that the policy that needs to be applied to S3 will be provided after the creation of the distribution. Under viewer protocol policy, I'll define that if a request to HTTP is made, it will automatically be redirected to HTTPS. Under price class, you can define to which edge locations your content is distributed. I'll select Use All Edge Locations, which means that the content is distributed worldwide. If your audience would only be located in the US and Europe, for example, you could select that option, which would save you some cash, but it's generally not that expensive. Then click on the Create Distribution button to create the CloudFront distribution. You will see in the blue box above that you'll need to copy the policy to give permissions to CloudFront to access the S3 Buckets web server. Click on Copy Policy and head over to the S3 Bucket. You can use the displayed link. I'll open it in a new tab. As you can see, we are on the Permissions tab in the S3 Bucket. Here, scroll down to the bucket policy and click on the edit button. Then copy the JSON policy into the policy text field. If you hit save changes, you might get an error that tells you that the first byte must start with a bracket. This is a formatting error, so you only need to move the open and close brackets to the left-hand side without leaving any spaces. If you click on Save Changes again, you'll see that now the bucket policy has been added. By adding this policy, we have defined that CloudFront is allowed to read the files and folders. The ARN string identifies the CloudFront service. The effect allow allows CloudFront to access S3. And the S3 double point get object refers to reading of files and folders. When we go back, you can see that the deployment is still in progress. It will take some time to distribute your website to all edge servers. So I'll be back in a sec. As you can see, the CloudFront deployment has completed. You should now be able to access the website using the distribution domain name. So let's try it. As you can see, it doesn't work yet, even though the deployment has completed. You will need to be a little patient. It will take a while before it actually works. In the meantime, let's go on to the error pages tab and make sure that if there is an error, it's redirected to a page. In this example, I'll redirect the 403 and 404 requests to index.html. But you might want to add specific error pages to your application and then redirect to those. Let's add the 403 error and customize the error response. And let's do the same with the 404 error response.
So let's again try to reload the page. And as you can see, it's now appearing. Let's test if we can modify a record. Okay, this has worked perfectly. And with this, we have completed the second step. The deployment is still pretty manual at the moment. You first need to build the code into the build folder, go into the AWS web console and upload the files. So let's try to optimize that. Let's head back to VS Code and open the package.json file. Here we will add some custom scripts. The first one we will add is to upload the build files to S3 over the AWS CLI. Let's call this Upload S3. Next, we will need to tell CloudFront that the code has changed by invalidating the cache. This will trigger CloudFront to fetch the updated bundle from the S3 bucket and redistribute it to all the edge locations. Let's call this invalidate CF cache. As we usually execute all commands when building the application, let's combine all of them into one script. It's now time to test our new scripts. Let's first delete the files in the S3 bucket to see if the deploy works. So let's head to our bucket on the web console, select all the files and folders and click on the delete button. We'll need to manually enter permanently delete into the text field and click on delete objects. As we can see, they are now gone. So let's go back to VS Code, open the terminal and execute the S3 deploy script. Oops, there is still an error. The command to run the build needs to be npm run build, of course. So let's fix this and run it again. So the build has run through and the upload is working as well. Now it's running the cache invalidation and it will show that the status is in progress, which is fine. You can type Q to close this screen. Let's go back to the web console. In the S3 bucket, we see that the files have been created, which is great. Let's try to load the page again. And as you can see, this is working too. Let's create a new record just to test if the backend works. And as we can see, it has been added, so all is working. Let's, as a last step, head over to CloudFront on the web console and to the Invalidation tab. We should now see that the invalidation completed successfully. And with this, we have completed the third and last 